Hey everyone, I'm Steve Hamaker, and I'm a comic book colorist and cartoonist. I've colored many graphic novels and comics, but my big break was coloring Bone by Jeff Smith. I've colored Table Titans by Scott Kurtz, Sip Kids, and a ton of covers for Terry Moore, and Hilo by Judd Winnick. I've colored for other folks including Penny Arcade, Coldplay with Mark Osborne. I've also self-published my own graphic novels, Fish and Chips, and two volumes of Plocks. I also illustrated the middle grade graphic novel series, Pathfinder Society for Viking Books. That's my quick resume. Now let's get into the video. All right, to start off, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I uh, begin and what I do with the different kinds of artwork, um, how I approach setting up those files to color. So I've got a couple examples here. Um, I've got a page from Bone, this is a particularly interesting page um, that will kind of illustrate why I, I do what I do with my files. Uh, and I got a couple Terry Moore covers here. This is from Motor, Motor Girl. And this is from, I think, a French version of Strangers in Paradise. Um, so I wanted to show those. Uh, for specific reasons. Oh, I guess I'll bring over the black and white. So that's what I, this is what the file looks like when I get it. And it's usually pretty high res. Terry usually gives me higher res than I really, <clears throat> than anyone really needs. Um, it's better, you know, higher res is better, but for the most part, um, you don't need 1200 DPI at, you know, 11 by 17 or whatever his uh, page size is, I think is 11 by 14 possibly, but uh, anyway, uh, it's it's better to have more information. Um, so essentially, my approach is kind of like an animation style in the in terms of coloring, um, meaning I color underneath the the line art, not um, on the same layer as the line art. So in Photoshop, obviously you can set up layers. So the the topmost layer. Um, is usually the line art, whether it's grayscale or uh, a bitmap, meaning just black and white. So grayscale is going to have lots of different tone, like these two pieces, and the bitmap files, like what Jeff Smith does with Bone. This is essentially only black and white information. So there is no gray, there is no ghosting around the edges. We scanned these um, as bitmap black and white files and then converted those to grayscale for reasons I will later explain. Uh, so let's get into it. So with let's start with the kind of the the basics of a black and white image like this. Um, generally what I'll do is I'll create a duplicate layer of this file of this uh, image. Um, so over here you can see that um, I have a background that's identical to this layer one. So the background can be anything. You can make it, you can make it black. You can make it white. I'm just gonna make it. Oops, I'm gonna make it white. Uh, let's just do. Where's my button? There's that. So essentially, what you want to do is go to this file, which is now your ink. We'll call it inks. Your inks file, and you want to go up to select and you scroll down to color range and what I normally would do is just once the color range box comes up which is over on my other screen here uh, you click on this sample colors and just go to highlights because highlights is gonna highlight or it's gonna select everything that's white and nothing that's black essentially what you want to do is like an animation cell you want to punch out the white so that it's transparent so now everything is selected that's white so then when I hit delete, nothing looks like it's changed, but, but what's really happened is if I, if I uh, fill this bottom layer with black, you can see it disappears. Now, does that mean it's gone? No, it doesn't. It means that there's nothing where white used to be. So this is essentially making like a, an animation cell, kind of a stat. That's how they would color uh, beneath animation art back in the day, is they would color uh, actually on the cell, but behind, the, uh, behind where the 
black ink was printed for the stat. So we're going to color on layers underneath this and not really color on this layer uh, except for one for this cover. I'm going to show you kind of why I did this. Well, not really why I did this, but why this technique came in handy later uh, for an effect that I, I felt like doing uh, for this particular page in bone. So we're going to go ahead and turn that back on. So now we have a nice, nice white background. And again, you're probably going to get the file in a, in a grayscale um, or bitmap uh, mode. So you're going to want, once you get this, once you have done this stage in grayscale, you're going to want to uh, convert it to RGB. Or if you're more comfortable with coloring in CMYK, the files can be a lot larger um, and it can be a little more daunting to um, color in CMYK, but many people do. I do not. I color in RGB. So this file is already set to RGB because I sort of uh, jumped ahead and grabbed a file that was already converted. So let me pull over the colored file. And you can see there's a lot going on here, but one thing that's of note is these black lines. Um, once I colored it, it kind of seemed like they should be white or maybe a light yellow. Uh, it just it was a it was a dramatic uh, it's a dramatic moment in the in the book. So with the with the ability to lock this layer. So that's the other thing you want to think about is once you have this ink ink uh, and transparent uh, layer you can do many things you can change you could change all of the the color if you hit lock right here that locks everything so you can't um, you can't fill anything like you wouldn't be able to put a big blob of color just anywhere on this on this layer so if I fill which is just your standard fill so that's just a gray if I pick a say I pick a red so you could make this any literally any color you want um, generally, the artist is going to want it to be black because if they're inking in black, um, that's kind of their intention. With Jeff, it was definitely his intention to keep the, the line uh, black, except for this page, which we decided to make this, this, uh, these lines uh, white. So what I, what I did is I manually went around on this. Uh, so you can see I just took it off of that layer. I just kind of snagged it so that I could mess with it. Um, but I didn't change anything. I didn't change the position of it or anything like that. I just essentially selected it, made a copy of it, and then put it just above the line art so I could mess with it and um, see what colors looked good. In this case, white looked fine. So that might be um, something that you would want to think about when you're setting up your files is, you know, what kind of effects are you looking for, looking at doing for the, if it's a cover, especially a lot of times, you know, um, coloring the, the line can be interesting and can add depth and can do a lot of things to the artwork that um, the, the original artist may have thought of or may, may not. You, it's kind of um, a way to sort of plus, plus the artwork. Um, so yeah, uh, essentially the layers are all kind of in order of, you know, farthest back to um, you know, in, in space, uh, farthest thing is obviously the, the lowermost layer over here. And then there are things that I like to do to, um, you know, these flares, I wanted to put them on their own layer. You don't have to, if, if you're confident with say, you know, putting all the clouds and all this stuff back here on one layer. And then, you know, these flares could, you know, still sort of, um, you know, exist on that layer. I, for, for me, I was kind of experimenting. So I was adding layers and uh, adding layers onto layers and things like that. So, um, so yeah, essentially that's kind of the that's the black and white way. That's the way I set up my black and white only files, which um, for Bone was pretty much everything, uh, and I believe Rassel also was that way. Um, we did a little bit here and there in Bone and Rassel where we would mess with the color of the lines, but uh, not very often. But uh, many artists, uh, you know, intentionally, it, myself included, will intentionally, you know, ink something in black, um, 
intending for it to be colored later. So setting up the file this way is going to help you get to that is going to help you get to that um, result. So moving on um, to a grayscale. Let me pull this over here. A grayscale uh, scan. If you receive the best way to do this, since you don't really want to do the same technique. So if I were to duplicate this layer, let's just do it just the way we did the last one. Let's just do this. So let's say we just go in here and we color range and we select the highlights. So if I hit delete, I'm losing a lot of stuff. I'm, let, I'm sort of at the mercy of Photoshop deciding what is light and what is dark. Uh, and I lost a lot of Terry's uh, detail, a lot of his shading. He intentionally wanted this particular piece of art to have the grayscale shading. So uh, knowing that, uh, I, had to, I had to approach how I was setting this file up uh, differently. Uh, the good news is this is actually easier. So let's just call this inks again. So this is our inks layer. But the easiest way to essentially do the same coloring underneath the line art is to set this layer to multiply. It's right there. So when you set that to multi, multi, multiply, now you can color. Let's just make a little layer here, new layer. Now you can, let's just get something real loud so you can see it. Now we can color <clears throat> underneath the line art. Now this, this particular one, I think, needed to be adjusted because it had some ghosting around it so we had to we have to, I'm, I have to usually consider that kind of that kind of thing let me see if I've got a better version of this I think this was the same let me check my other file here so if you go over here I can just show you guys yeah so this layer layer 14 is my line art layer so that ghosting I don't know that's what I'm trying to avoid actually that kind of a ghosting where you can see sort of um, grayscale um, it's kind of like grayscale lines that aren't transparent um, around the black lines so yeah this uh, I think this also I had to cut her out and make her a separate layer because I wanted this gorilla to be sort of treated differently and, and um, I wanted his lines to be a little lighter than hers. So that's another thing that you can, again, communication with your artist is, is top, top priority for things like this and setting up the file. You don't want to do anything that would compromise their original art or what their original intentions were for their, uh, for their artwork uh, once it's colored. So just work with your uh, artist and, and try to figure out what, what works best. Um, Terry and I work really well together that way I can ask him anything and he can give me uh, lots of directions sometimes he just says go for it do whatever and experiment other times he has very specific ideas and I, I follow or I fly so that's the that's the rule uh, anyway yeah so you can see you know she's on her own layer um, the nice thing about having the characters kind of separated like this is I can do things like um, you know, add layer masks, which I'll get into in another video, uh, where you can add different textures. I like to put different textures on the characters than I do the background. So you can see there's a texture here on the back, on the uh, very background. So if I turn that back on, you can see it's kind of a watercolor texture. It makes it look like it's painted. Uh, so, it's, you know, essentially um, treating every layer sort of differently to, to create depth and to create visual interest and uh, so that it's not flat. Uh, is kind of my intention for a lot of my coloring. So, But uh, that kind of wraps it up for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions about um, setting up files, uh, coloring, anything to do with comics, but uh, especially anything to do with this particular um, video, please uh, comment below, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. As a reminder, Please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. You can buy many of my books directly from me at plox-comics.com store.
you can click the link in the description below. Thanks.